just based on our experience yes. in, um, when we were rolling out the CAPME program, mm -hmm. as the minister alluded to, many times you would find, and the discourse can co also corroborate this as well, um, where a homeowner ought to have a three-phase meter, he will order a, a single-phase meter, right? So that, again, one is cheaper, and two, he just will probably just disconnect certain loads or what have you, right? So the question really is, is the market mature enough just yet for us? Ideally, as a manufacturer, would I like to di um, sell direct to the end user? Absolutely, right? But there's just some of these um, controls that need to be put in place. That's one. Two, as um, Mr. Balogun also mentioned, site surveys. If they own, it's not a phone, you know, sometimes the parallel is being drawn between the telecom industry and the power sector. Um, it's not a phone where I could just go in and say, okay, I'll go to MTN and go buy it. <laughs> Frankly speaking, it's something I would like to do, right? Because again, it means I will be in full production 100%. Um, but at the end of the day, as the minister also mentioned, if you come to my factory, I will need what's known as an SGC code, right, from each um, disco. And it's unique. It's a unique code specific also to that meter as well. So that each meter has a specific meter number. It has a specific SGC code to that particular um, disco. So that you cannot take the meter from Lagos. You know, again, because if I buy that, then I would own the meter. Okay. And now then let, I, let me, because we're running fast out of time, okay. and I do want to involve the audience. Um, estimated billing has issues, and so I want to talk about the mechanisms that exist for seeking redress when uh, customers are not happy. Um, what, what are the discos? I mean, I, I know that uh, the regulator has laid out procedures. I'd like to get a better understanding of what those procedures are for, for lodging complaints. If you get a bill that you feel it's inaccurate or that you've been cheated, um, because I want the audience to get a sense of what they can do. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> let me begin by clarifying on uh, the estimate methodology. Um, what actually happens is that uh, you pick a, 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 partic a particular line feeding a cluster of customers. Those lines are metered. That's a starting point. So you get the amount of energy which has been supplied on that line. So the line will have metered customers as well as unmetered customers. So the, the method which is prescribed by NEC is starting with that figure of energy which has been supplied. You then subtract the amount of losses according to the profile, the trajectory which is in my toe. And the figure which you remain with, you subtract the total amount of energy that has been consumed by metered customers. Yeah, I think we've already then, established it's a very confusing system yeah, no, for the no, average no, Nigerian. Let me, no, no, yeah, seriously. Okay. It's a really co for the average Nigerian will not understand this subtraction and this loading. All they know is that they... you are charging them for power and you're not sure whether this is the power that they've used or not. I want to explain where the distortion will come from. Okay. So when you then allocate this energy according to the comparison of the meter between the unmetered, the distortion comes in a particular tariff, you know, you have, you have a, a category of customers. For example, R1, you may have one bulb customer to a two, three bedroom house. But then when you work out that average, you find that some customers are overcharged by virtue of, uh, you know, their low consumption. Others are undercharged because in that, you don't have identical homes. So for the customers who feel that they've been charged, the mechanism is they will come to a disco. And then you take it case by case. You go and verify and uh, make an adjustment in terms of the average so that next time when they are being estimated, they are getting uh, <coughs> a, a calculation befitting their level of consumption. And so are, are you definitely listening <coughs> to complaints from customers? Because the feedback we have from the people we've surveyed and that we've spoken to is that actually... And um, when they try to raise complaints, either they can't reach the people that they're supposed to complain to, the forums office which should exist are not there, et cetera, et cetera. So what is the real situation? Well, let me, let me, let me give you feedback from my disco, <laughs> uh, which is I can talk a little bit of facts. We, we manage every single complaint, every single day, every single week, and every single month. So we track what complaints we get, and we track it, is it against estimated billing, is it against CAPNI, is it against whatever. So we track it in each, each individual business unit that we have, and we follow up personally. When the customer comes in and complains, we obviously have, we have a customer complaint desk where they actually take up the issue. 
we then address it, we investigate it, we go back to them. If we know for a fact that 80% of our complaints get settled within the first week, and there's no problem. However, are we perfect? No, not at all. And can we do better? Yes, we can. But the issue is you've, they've got the forum office, which we track uh, continually. In fact, uh, and if, if we wanted access to the data showing how many complaints you've had, how many you've it, treated, that data is available. It's available, and I'm open to share it at any t stage with anybody. Is this the same for the Abuja discourse? Yes, we have uh, a customer relation management uh, system. What we do is um, it's, it's a web-based system. Uh, we receive complaints through telephone, through letters being written mm -hmm. to us, and through walk-in complaints. Before we even tackle those complaints, they are first entered into a customer relations management system. It brings transparency uh, to the uh, effectiveness in resolving the complaints. And from that system, we're able to analyze and gauge how we are performing. I can confidently say that the complaints that are lodged into our system, our resolution is 95%. We think it's not good enough. We're still working on it. To ensure that we, we your resolution we is 95 percent we're in abuja oh. yes so please. i can get customers in come. here huh? we come and we take you through the system <laughs> okay yeah. but you wanted quickly because i have Just to go to break the, the, there's need for the appraisers of the sector in terms of the sector and the consumers there are a lot of a lot of gap in terms of the interface that we have today we need to bridge that gap we need the enlightenment we need to educate the customer what is their right in terms of the billing and their responsibility in adhering to their home standard. In the past, before you, you bring in services to home, there's somebody that normally certify their installation. That one is no longer there because we need to do pre-inspection pre for a house that is ready for meter. That is one. Then we need to educate them as well as, as to energy theft. We must provide energy theft policy that will deter people from stealing electricity. Okay. It's very All important. Right.